What's going on, Golf Addicts? DB here with a course breakdown video for the American Express 2024. You got three golf courses, the main one being Pete Dye's Stadium Course. I'm going to give you everything you need to know, nothing you don't. Make this snappy and look at the model, share my screen on Bet the Number. So we're going to talk about some key factors on this golf course. I'm going to give you two player quotes that I think you're going to want to hear. And we're going to look at the model on Bet the Number. The field is out. The model has been updated on BTN. We're going to see what it says. Start seeing what it what it looks like, what they're waiting, how they're waiting things, what players are popping early. Let's let's uh, let's get on with it. Let's start talking about the MX. So, like I said, three golf courses. It's the first one where we get multiple courses. Right? They're going to play. Uh, everybody's going to play each course. That would be the Pete Dye Stadium course, the Nicholas course, and La Quinta Country Club. Whereas Pat used to say when we first started La Quinta country club or whatever i mean unbelievable but um here we are still nine years later we still do this people still watch so three different courses then on the then for round four they're going to play the stadium course the first three rounds are pro-am format so they're going to have amateurs playing with them round four the amateurs hit the they, they hit the curb they they get out of here so for the main part like you're only going to have shot link data on the pga stadium on the pete die stadium course that's where you're going to be pulling all your stats from. That's really the the proper way to weight this thing. They're all par 72s, around 7,000 to 7,100 yards in, in there. Um, <clears throat> so let me read a quote from Patrick Reed. Yeah, this is a throwback quote from Patrick Reed. You ready? Remember him? He says, unlike Q School, the pins are a little more accessible here because you're playing with amateurs. They're not going to put pins three paces from the edge like they do on most tour events. You might not finish if they did that. So they make them more accessible. That's why you see the lower scores. If they were to tuck the pins like they normally do, the score would get cut in half because now you're hitting six irons and five irons and seven irons into greens, and you're able to go flag hunting at the moment. So that's something we got to keep in mind. This is a birdie fest, All like, again, more on that in a second, but this is a birdie fest. So with the, with the amateurs playing in these groups, there are more middle pins. That's just what you need to know. It's desert golf. All the courses play pretty similar. You could argue that the stadium course is definitely the more difficult. Most players agree on that. Nicholas and La Quinta can definitely play right within fractions in terms of scoring average to be the same. Maybe stadium's a little tougher statistically over the years, but they're pretty close, okay? Um, in, in normal conditions, right? It, it can be cool in the mornings in the desert dome of of, uh, of Palm Beach there in uh, in California, La Quinta, California, whatever. It can be a little cool in the morning, so that is something to take note of. The Scottsdale guys, the desert guys, the guys who are kind of used to those desert conditions, could have a, you could give them a little bit of a bump. Let me read you this quote from Max Homa. He says, this is exactly like I play at home in Scottsdale. It's just like TPC Scottsdale, Whisper Rock and Silverleaf, all which courses I play. It feels comfortable. It's got the same coloring, the same types of subtle slopes. And being from California, we're used to putting on these surfaces. So whenever we come here, we figure it's just about as easy as it gets. So a little bit of desert vibes, Cali vibes. We all, we're all quite familiar with the stadium course in PGA West. Um, the... the but even the stadium course plays pretty easy. Like it's par 72, standard four par threes, poor, very good, four very gettable par fives. Um, the par five scoring is going to be a huge factor this week. The par threes are the bogey holes, and they're all pretty much kind of mid to long iron approaches. And that's really, that goes for all three courses. And it, and it doesn't seem to be a place where experience really matters all that much. There's not, it's not too tough to, to kind of figure out. So don't put, I wouldn't put a lot of stock in course history. And at the end of the day, with the high green and regulation numbers, this place can turn into, to quote our dear friend, RIP, John Rom, this piece of putting contest. That That's kind of what we get. He was famous when he said that. Now he's the defending champ, but he's at live. So he get, I guess he's not the defending champ, but he said that the year before he won, and it's a putting contest. So, yeah, here, here we go. Um, off the tee, the rough isn't really a big deal. It's borderline useless. It's not difficult at all. But big misses, you have desert and you have water. Don't miss large out here at, P at the stadium course. Um, uh, most players will just keep hitting driver. There are some holes where these guys are going to are gonna club down. But for the most part, you got to stay aggressive here in the birdie fest or they're going to keep hitting drivers. Approach play, it's <clears> – approach play is pretty standard on tour. In terms of approach difficulty, Nicholas and La Quinta are easier. Uh, the die course is definitely tougher. Plenty of wedge opportunities, but don't sleep on the middle of the bag in the iron. In terms of the irons, we'll, we'll look at the approach shot distribution here in a second on uh, on bet the number. And around the green, chipping almost is, it's 
kind of irrelevant because of the high green regulation, but also it's pretty easy unless you're in the bunkers here at the stadium course. The bunkering around the greens is pretty tough. Um, so good sand play could save some guys out of trouble for sure. And putting, it is Bermuda, but it's overseeded. It it doesn't putt like grainy Bermuda. It's not POA. We actually have an overseed category in Bet the Number. I'll show you that here in a second in the custom model. Um, and also there's a, a little putting, a little another little putting nugget in the model this week that I want to bring everybody's attention to later that most people are probably not going to factor in. Over the years, we've collected some caddy thoughts on this golf course, and those would be things like a high, a high draw off the tee seems ideal. TPC Scottsdale is the only solid comp course we got from uh, a caddy who was on the bag for a winner. Got to stay aggressive, keep your foot on the pedal, slight edge to the desert residents that can judge distances in the colder mornings and then adjust as the sun starts to come out later in the day. Makes a lot of sense. Guys like John Rahm, Hudson Swafford, Siwoo, Andrew Landry, Adam Long, have have all won here. Duffner's won here. So you got a lot of different types of players, bombers, short hitters, grinders, birdie, you know, a lot of different types of players. Weather's going to be as every week key. Let's uh let's share the screen and start looking at the model. By the way, <clears throat> before I get to the model, if you're not in the Tour Junkies Discord, I'm telling you you're missing out. We're having a, a, an amazing start to the year in the Discord. The props plays are hitting, the bets are are doing nicely, the conversations in there whether it's the uh, the Tuesday, Wednesday kind of office hours chats that I'm having with the bunch. We've got a full thread in there dedicated to under, underdog best ball season-long performance that kicks off here in a few weeks. Um, the, the camaraderie, the contest that we're having, obviously you get to be a part of the uh, Tour Junkie season-long contest to win a trip to come play golf with me and Pat. And among, among that, there's just tons of good conversations, tons of good information. Intel is all shared there. The Wednesday night chats have been off to a roaring start in 2024. Consider joining. It's only $19.99 a month. It's $1.99 for the year. Promise you, you won't regret it. You get a lot of value out of it. I assure you that there will be a week where we will give you just the nugget you need to either get on a player, stay off a player that will save you some money or make you some money, or, or you just tail plays and you make money that way and you enjoy the community as well. We're doing some meetups. Uh, we're playing golf with the waste management with a group of players, uh, not at the waste management, but on the Friday of waste management, playing golf with a couple of members in the Discord that we offer exclusively to them. So it's just a great community. And honestly, it's, it's the best way that you can support us. I mean, everything that we do is free. Literally every piece of content we do is free, except the, the few pieces that we do for the Discord. And if you've been listening to us for nine years, you've likely consumed a ton of content from us on the free, all right? And all we're saying is, if you want to kick the Tour Junkies some support, that $20 a month, that $1.99 a year goes a long way for us, and we would we would really appreciate it. And it is a great community. I, I assure you, you will see value. All right, let's, uh, let me share my screen here. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the course first. Now, this is, this is the stadium course only. So, because we we have shot link data, medium sized greens, overseed grass on the greens and chipping, dormant Bermuda in the rough. I've got this filtered to the last five years. Pretty average in terms of fairways hit, above average in greens and regs. Scrambling is easier than normal. Um, three putt avoidance easier than normal. The birdies per round is almost, I mean, it's up by a good bit. I mean, four and a half birdies per round on average, you know, birdie fest. Bogies are down a good bit, so score. that's why the scoring is where it is. Par three scoring about average. Par four scoring is less. Par five is less than average on tour as well. If we look at past top performers, just the last five winners, um, similar to what we've seen in, in, you know, in Hawaii at Wailai, a lot of approach play and putting. Now, it's funny that John Rahm won the – putting contest by losing strokes putting, but he was, he was so good tee to green. It didn't, it didn't really matter. Um, but for the most part, you know, putting definitely tends to be a thing, but you have bad putters here. Like Siwoo Kim is a bad putter. He's streaky, but he's, he's overall, he's bad. Hudson Swafford is an okay ish putter. He had a big week. I hit him at 150 to one this week. It was a beautiful day. Uh, Adam Long, Adam Landry, both good, put Andrew Landry, both good putters. If we expand this, so like look at the top five over the last five years, pretty much more of the same. Pretty much more of the same. Approach play putting. You can see here on our driving card, we've calculated that uh, you only have about eight or nine driving holes on this course, which does not really lend itself to a bomber's paradise. It's not a, a, a huge advantage at the stadium course. And then you have the approach distribution. As you can see, it's, it's a little more evenly distributed than what we saw maybe for Wiley. A lot of good stuff here in the, in the wedge, kind of starting to get into the middle of the bag. 
but you've also got some of these long iron approach shots with the four par fives on every course. I mean, you know, I mean, over the three days that you play, you're going to play, you know, 12 par fives. It's going to be extremely critical that you, you know, that you, you birdie those holes and you get there in two and you give yourself those opportunities and you go low there, but you can see the distribution. You do have some rough uh, shots out of the rough here for sure, but not a, not a ton. And there aren't a whole lot of waste area or bunker shots in terms of approach. So, and you can see the rough penalty is nothing. It's literally, it's, it's below tour average in almost every, uh, yeah, in almost, yeah, it's, it's below tour average in almost every category. So, uh, and around the green distribution, it's easier in every category. I've hovered and looked over all the, all, all of, uh, the differences here and around the green distribution. It's, it's, this is a little different. Like it's pretty close, like these within 15 yard ranges, um, for most of the around the green play. So you don't get a whole lot of that other stuff. Putting is pretty much standard. It is, it is what it is. We're going to look at something unique there with the putting here, uh, as we open up the custom model, let's do that. So let's open up the custom model and see what the folks behind the scenes at BTN are waiting, how they're waiting it, and uh, go from there. Now, uh, I, I, this is where I'm going to tell you every every single week that the folks behind the model at BTN do update the model as the week goes on. So, uh, and and I know that they're working on an uh, an update to push where when you log in or you go to the screen and the model has been updated, it will force you, it'll tell you that the model has been updated. You can refresh your screen. So that is coming, but for, to be safe each day, and especially as you approach like Wednesday, I would refresh your screen a couple times a day to see if the model changes because uh, they, they are changing it based on conditions, based on weather, stuff like that. It won't change a ton, but it, it could change a little bit. So uh, I've got the drop down selected here to the BTN Amex model. And, you know, what I, I'm probably going to do is because I like to do it and I like to tinker more. I'm probably going to end up adding my own. I'm going to leave everything in here, but also adding in my own um, pieces of information that, I, that I, I think are important. But let's take a look at what we have. So here are the settings. Uh, the global filter is set to the last 40 rounds. No other filters within here in terms of architects or green size or grass or any of that. So no other filters there globally, but I do know that those are coming here in a second. So strokes gained off the tee, 15%. Strokes gained approach per round versus the field, 20%. Strokes gained around the green, gave a little weight to it, 8%. I could see myself taking this down to like 3% and adding in bunker play and bumping that to maybe 5 and coming out the same here. Now here's where you start getting some additional customization. Strokes gained putting per round. 12% last 40 rounds, but filtered to 10 courses. And I know that these 10 courses have been filtered to reflect overseed greens. So the folks behind Bet the Number are quite familiar with what greens are overseeded when they, at that time of year, when they play and how they roll and which ones are not. So this is filtered down to your 10 overseeded green uh, golf courses with a 12% weight last 40 rounds on those courses. Same thing here. Uh, well, this is a different different filter, but a new another strokes gained approach metric. Obviously, approach being heavily weighted. Now this is at fifteen percent plus the twenty up top, up to thirty five percent in approach. And this is last forty rounds between eighty yards, one hundred and fifty, and off the tee in the fairway. So from the fairway, and those probably some key, uh, maybe a key par three or two as well. Uh, another strokes gained putting filter here. This is per shot versus the player's baseline. So that's how we can get the distance factored in is when we go per shot, we can look at the, the player's performance between six feet and 15 feet. This one just lasts 40 rounds in general, not surface specific, given a 10% weight. And then the last strokes gain approach category, another 15%. So now we're, we're up there in terms of weight on approach, which I think you'll see reflected in the model rank here in a second. But this is last 40 rounds between 175 and 250 yards. And, and it's all lies here. And then birdie or better percentage, knowing that it's a it's a, a scoring contest. Now, you know, I could add, uh, I'll show you something cool here. Well, I don't, I don't want to add, but if, if you want, you can add statistics to this and this total weight up top will just, you don't have to worry about figuring it out. I mean, if you want to, you should, it's probably best. But in the event you, you goof it up and there's like 110%, 
all of the stats, the, the site will ratio out all the stats relative to 100%. So you don't have to worry about that. All right, so I'm going to leave the model where it is for now. I'm not going to tinker, and let's just take a look at who's popping. Scotty Scheffler's number one makes a ton of sense. When you have that kind of approach play weighted, strokes getting off the tee, getting 15%, yeah, he, Scotty's going to be the guy. This is where he sucks. Like, oh, my God, Scotty. Oh, now it has looked a little better, right? It, it's it's looked a little better, I think. Let me pull something up here. Um, God, I mean, but he's just been, and I don't want to have to keep sharing my screen. So let me look at uh, what 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 do we just play the century? Oh, Scheffler, 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 Scheffler. Um, okay, round one for Scotty at the century. He so he lost strokes putting for the event. Round one, he gained about a third a stroke. Round two, he almost gained a full shot. Round three, he lost over two shots. And round four, he lost over a shot and a half. I, I, I don't I don't know I don't know what to do. Um, but when it turns into a effing putting contest, according to John Rahm, it is a little worrisome. But he is number one in the model. Sam Ryder, number two in the model. Let's look at what Sam Ryder. So his performance here, and again, I, I don't think getting caught up in course history is something that you necessarily need to do. I, I sure good course history is going to be great for that guy. I think if if the course history is looks like a bunch of missed cuts, that could be an issue. Maybe they don't like playing in pro amps. Um, but like this kind of course history, which is really just kind of middling finishes, I don't really that doesn't bother me. It, it shows me that he comes here every year, he makes a cut. He flames out, and there we go. But he definitely has seemingly been playing better than maybe Sam Ryder of the past. Uh, but, you know, he had a decent fall, number two in the model. No real weaknesses on on Ryder. Maybe off the tee, some, an issue. Eric Cole, yet again, pops in the model. Good Lord. Uh, now, again, this is not taking into consideration any statistics from the Sony as of now. I'm recording this on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So no, none of the Sony statistics are in play here. Um Patrick Cantlay, we're going to get to see Cantlay again here. Cantlay checks a box. JT Poston's been playing great, great golf for JT. What's he done here? Yeah, T6 last year, T7 in 2019. And I, knowing JT personally, great pro lamb guy. Like laid back, very nice, doesn't get rattled. I could see him being a great pro lamb guy. Um, Steven Yeager, how about this? Daniel Berger. Now, now here's what we should know. The, the model is taking into account the last 40 rounds from Daniel Berger, which is a long time ago. I do know that additional filtering is, is going to be added to where you can cut it off at a certain time range. But I mean, Berger's a statistical issue right now anywhere because you would have no data on him in that case. And he'd be down at the bottom, but he's Daniel Berger. Like who knows what version of Daniel Berger we're going to get. But I would consider that kind of noisy uh, information there. Same thing with Ryu. Ryo, you're, you're only getting the information, the, the data from the few PGA starts he's had. Uh, we're not bringing over Corn Ferry Tour data just yet on BTM, but we will be. Uh, so, you know, I, I consider that one noisy too. Xander's, uh, Xander's obviously going to check a lot of boxes. What's he? I'm surprised he's even here. I guess he came here last year for the first time, maybe ever or, or possibly in a while. Um, T3 from, from Xander. Ryan Moore, he checked boxes a little bit this week too, and I don't think it worked out. Never really done great. T T6 in 2020, three missed cuts from there. I don't think he's having a great Sony unless he he makes a move here on on uh, on Friday. Uh, let's actually, I like doing this too. Let's go to the bottom of the list and see if there's any interesting. Michael Blocks in the field. If anybody's ready to play Blocky, uh, let's see if, it, if there's any like big names down here, not just the scrub rookies that we don't have a lot of info on. Uh, Mav McNeely, but that's going to be. Old info, Robbie Shelton, Lonto Griffin, um, KH Lee, who kind of played decent today at the Sony. Could he be back? But definitely not a great spot in terms of statistics for him right now. Uh, he had a rough fall. Um, Sheamus, is Sheamus kind of busted and broken? I don't know. He's had two good finishes out of the last three years here. Uh, who else? Scott Stallings, although he had a good start to the Sony this this week. Not any great finishes really in the last five years here, that's for sure. Austin Eckroat's played well today. See what he does. So you got some of these guys who are starting to, you know, play well at the Sony that, you know, may, eh, you know, maybe okay here. Jason Day. Jason Day, T18 here last year. I get, you know, you don't have you don't have sh these shot link events. So when you we have no shot link data, he's not getting any credit for the the win at the Grant Thornton. I don't know if you should, but 
I mean, probably not. He should probably no, he should probably not get get credit at the Grant Thornton. So there you go. That's uh, that's just a first look at the custom model on BTN. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Listen, meet us in the Discord. All right. Plus, if you join the Discord, we give you the biggest discount possible on Bet the Number. So if you want the biggest discount, you got to be in the Discord. You got to be a paying member of the Discord, and it is quite the discount on Bet the Number. It's the biggest one out there on the internet in the world, in the World Wide Web internet. Okay. Also, if you haven't joined Bet the Number, click the link. The link's in the description. Link to Discord's in the description. If you're not going to join the Discord, but you do want to join BTN, Bet the Number, you can use code TJ to get uh, $5 off a monthly subscription and $50 off the annual subscription. Site's changing regularly. It's getting updated regularly. It's great stuff. We're taking great feedback from folks in the Discord, too, and folks on the Tour Junkies, uh, in the Tour Junkies kind of podcast network. So, Appreciate everybody for the feedback. Let's have a great weekend. Hope your screens are green and your bookies are bent over for the Sony. Let's get ready for the Amex. All right. Show's dropping Monday. See ya.